Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Leung. In this video, we shall continue the out of nothing triangle and introduce the thinking logic to deal with the pedigree analyze. So let's have a quick revision for last video. I talk about the pedigree analyze skill called out of nothing triangle. This helps us to choose the suitable cross in the family and determine the dominant and recessive allele. And the criteria of choosing the suitable cross is to identify that the characteristic does not appear in the parent's generation but appear in the offspring generation. Therefore, in example, crosses X and Y are not qualified. However, cross Z is qualified. In last video, I talked about the secret of the out of nothing triangle is that we can determine the dominant and the recessive allele easily. In this video, we are going to learn how to express the thinking process in a logical way. So we are going to investigate a pedigree which shows the inheritance of the six toe feet in a family. And there are three questions for us to have a comprehensive understanding of pedigree analyze. Part A, we need to identify the dominant allele and explain the answer. This part will be the main focus of this video. We have to realize how can we express our idea without drawing the genetic diagram. Part B, it follows part A, we need to identify the genotype, the allele composition of the individuals one and two and five. Part C, it is a very typical question in the basic genetics topic. We need to find out the chance of giving birth to a child with the particular phenotype. So we deal with the part A question first. First step is to identify the out of nothing triangle. Then we can determine the dominant and recessive allele. Remember that we have to equip the logical expression when deducing the dominant and recessive allele. Therefore, I have to introduce you the thinking logic, which is like the guiding questions to help us to construct our knowledge in genetics. As what I mentioned, you have to identify the out of nothing triangle first and the family including individuals 1, 2, and 5 is chosen. So the first step, we have to identify the parent's phenotype and deduce the possible allele. Then we have to identify the offspring phenotype and deduce the possible allele. The first step is the most important one because we are looking for the heterozygous individual. After that, we shall determine the dominant and recessive allele. So actually, how can we present the idea Let's take a look at the following slide. Remember that the whole thinking logic is deduction. You may have some assumption or prediction that the five-toed allele or the six-toed allele is the dominant allele. If so, you still need to pretend that you don't know. Maybe somehow our prediction is wrong. So we analyze the out of nothing triangle step by step. Firstly, we talk about the parents Individuals 1 and 2, they are 6 toed, so they have at least one 6 toed allele. Since we do not know that whether the 6 toed allele is dominant allele yet, we are just able to confirm that there must be at least one 6 toed allele in individuals 1 and 2. Secondly, we talk about the offspring. Individual 5 is 5 toed, so he must receive at least one 5 toed allele from either one of the parents, individuals 1 or 2. Just like the first step, we do not determine the dominant and recessive allele yet. So the only thing we can confirm is that individual 5 has at least one 5 toed allele, which must be passed from either one of the parents. Thirdly, who is or are the possible heterozygous individuals? From step 1, we know that both individuals 1 and 2 have at least one sex toe allele. From step 2, we know that either individuals 1 or 2 have passed one 5 toe allele to individual 5. Therefore, either individuals 1 or 2 is heterozygous. It means that either one of them is carrying sex toe and 5 toe allele. Last but not least, for step 4 is how we end the story. For the green statement, it is the very basic concept of genotype. We have learned homozygous dominant, double capital letter A, homozygous recessive, double small letter A, and heterozygous, big A and small A. In the heterozygous condition, only the dominant allele can be expressed. 
Therefore, the six-toed heterocycles individuals 1 or 2 will vow that the six-toed allele is the dominant allele. From this part, it may be a bit surprising that all that being six-toed is the dominant characteristic. Although, most individuals, just like us, are five-toed. It doesn't mean that being five-toed is the dominant characteristic. For part B, by using the capital letter T and the small letter T for the dominant allele and recessive allele respectively, we need to identify the phenotype of individuals 1, 2, and 5. From part A, it's concluded that the 6 toe allele is the dominant allele and the 5 toe allele is the recessive allele. Therefore, the 5 toe individual, individual 5, must be homozygous recessive. So the answer is small t, small t. Since individuals 1 and 2 are 6 toed and both of them pass the 5 toed allele to the individual 5, so both of them are heterocycles, and the answer is capital letter T and small letter T. And part C is the basic calculation question. If individuals 5 and 6 would like to give birth to the 4th child, who is the chance of having a 6 toed boy? There are two criteria for the baby. The first one is being six-toed, and the second one is being a boy. From part A and part B, it's concluded that the genotype of individual 5 is homozygous recessive, small small letter T. Based on the pedigree, individuals 5 and 6 gave birth to individuals 10, 11, and 12 before. It's found that individuals 10 and 12 are homozygous recessive. Therefore, they must receive 5 toe allele from individuals 5 and 6. It shows that Individual 6 must be heterocycles. By drawing the genetic diagram, it's found that the phenotypic ratio of 5 toe offspring to 6 toe offspring is 1 to 1, which means 50% chance. However, it's not yet the answer. It's because there is the second criterion. We need a 6 toe boy instead of a 6 toe baby. And the chance to give birth to a boy is also 50%. Therefore, the equation will be half times half. Then, the answer is one-fourth, that means 25% chance. Based on the example above, we know that the basic genetics question can be done step by step. We need the common languages and basic concepts. Then, we use the guiding questions to help ourselves to deduce the genotype or chance of giving birth to a particular type of offspring. Then, we go back to the challenge question in last video. After reading the pedigree, we need to deduce which individuals must be heterocycles. Like the hints before, we use the out of nothing triangle first, then we can determine the dominant allele and recessive allele. After that, we can identify which individuals must be heterocycles. Surely, we pick up individuals 3, 4, and 8 in a triangle. Then we can start the guiding questions to construct the logical thinking. We talk about the parents, offspring, and identify the heterocycles individual. Finally, the green statement helps us to determine the normal allele is the dominant allele. So if you would like to take a look at the logical expression, so you can pause the video and then take a look at it. Then we go back to the real question. Who must be heterocyclous? So we focus on individuals 5, 7, 9, and 10 first because it's mentioned in the options A, B, C, D. So because all of them are normal, therefore they can be either homozygous, dominant, and heterocygous. However, we take a look at the parents, we should be able to draw the correct conclusion. Individuals 2 and 6 are homozygous recessive, they must pass one recessive allele to their offspring individual 5 and 10 respectively. And as what we mentioned before, the individuals with dominant phenotype, they must have at least one dominant allele. So that's why for individual 5 and the individual 10, they must be the heterocycles individuals. So after two examples in the video, it's your turn now. Read the pedigree showing the inheritance of a genetic disease, albinism in a family. Then answer part A and part B. Apply what you learn in this video and answer the questions. You can find the worksheet, guidelines, and the answer in the link attached. 
So hope this video can help you all to be able to answer basic genetics question. Any question, feel free to ask in the comment, and I shall answer you as soon as possible. See you next time. Bye bye.